Florida, Hutchinson Island. My wife Kathy and I were staying on the Atlantic coast of South Florida, a nice community called Boynton Beach. We were hosted by family with a lovely villa a couple miles in off the shore. It's kind of a quintessential South Florida setting, large lanai, pool, cactus and palms, bromeliads, lots of sun. Despite the obviously near-perfect surroundings, we set off on an early Wednesday morning to do one of the things in life we most love to do, and are best at. Hey, so here we are. We've just come on to uh, Hutchinson Island uh, near Port St. Lucie, Florida, and uh, we are here doing one of the things that we love the most in life we're hunting for some wild sand uh, Hutchinson Island looks like an amazing place on paper and I think the reality is going to be even better uh, Kath's going to get into the details on some of the facts about Hutchinson uh, but right now it's 81 degrees it's 11 o'clock in the morning. I got my best girl with me. We're rolling down the street in a rental car that likes to go fast on wide open roads. And we're about to go to a wide open beach. It doesn't really get much better than that, people. And that's what we're all about these days. Hutchinson Island. Beautiful island. And we are at middle cove beach access and as you can see behind me there's like almost nobody here i'm gonna go catch up with kath so we just made it out here onto the beach at middle cove uh this is just i, I mean i just gotta say this is fucking remarkable to be here in the middle coast of Florida and I mean I could count the amount of people on this whole section of beach that we can probably see five or six miles and there's probably less than a dozen people out here total Amazing, isn't it? Uh, but I have to say right now I mean you know let's face it the Gulf beaches are amazing in their own right the sand uh, you know just the Gulf really different than the big ocean uh, but this is a really wide beach. The sand actually oh, is, is wide, amazing, yeah. amazing sand. And it just stretches as far as the eye can see. Breakers, aquamarine water, and the Florida sun. Damn, I think it's time to crack a beer. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. So as Kath and I have those beers out on the beach, which, you know, I have to cautiously not recommend understand but uh i see uh our neighbors a couple of surf casters and so i decide to go over and have a look and see what's happening so i'm uh walking down our little stretch of heaven here and uh i see someone's got a fish on the line and uh i just spent a few minutes talking with a really great guy up the beach but he really didn't want to give it up for the video, but I'm going to see if these folks are willing to talk to me. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but in the end, there was a great conversation involved. And he, you know, very openly shared with me some really great points of his life and how they wound up down there and the decisions, of course, that they had to make, you know, the choices between... A Ferrari and a Nissan Sentra so that they could not only afford, I think it was more than that. They wanted to be able to go places and not be bound to the idea of their, you know, material thing, this Ferrari. They were, you know, well thought out people. Um, but I, I, I asked him, uh, I said, uh, you know, as, as he's fishing, I, I go up to him and I, I said, well, what are you hoping to catch? And he just looks at me with a big, mm -hmm. wide, broad smile. 
and kind of leans in. And he says, nothing. I said, fair enough. Just, you know, being out here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, yes. And smiles, a, just a, a grin as big as, as big as the coast was long. Yeah, good soul. Everyone's happy to talk and smile with you, but, uh, you know, I understand in this day and age, people's guardedness and that's fine the reality of it is is we're really out here for the sun and the sand and the surf the seabirds and the seashells and that's what we're getting right now and i take the time to speak with another couple surf casters folks from portland maine also snowbirds January to June. Very nice folks. Ken was a bit more interested in the fishing than me and my <laughs> questions. Uh, but June was thrilled that I stopped to talk. And honestly, we really just bullshitted and laughed with each other for about, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Ken kept looking back at us from his surf casting and, and laughing along with us. You know, you, you meet good people when you make the decision to open yourself up and, and let the good parts of yourself shine out and make those decisions to be really connected, man. Yeah. We talked about how that there's 23 miles of barrier um, reef island. It's actually two barrier reef islands that are sort of kind of connected as one and they call Hutchinson Island. Um, if you're into surfing, you can check out the live surf webcam um, up for Jensen Beach and that's at Hutchinson Island live webcam. So that's a kind of a cool feature. And um, there's also some really great family spots and Bathtub Reef Beach is one that sounded really cool because um, the way the surf goes out, it gets kind of shallow. And um, There's also birding, lots of wildlife, turtles, um, some that are endangered and only are there. So that's really neat. There's places to go picnicking. All of the beach accesses have free parking, which is really cool. And they really say every single one is different from another. Um, the, and there's... Just on this map we have here that some lovely ladies gave us, there's um, over 23 beach accesses. Hello. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point in time, we've had a great few hours here at, uh, what was it, Middle Creek? Middle, Middle Cove. Middle Cove, yeah. At, at Middle Cove here on Hutchinson Island, just outside of Port St. Lucie, Florida. I got a chance to talk to a bunch of nice people here, none of whom were excited about giving a video interview, and a couple of whom expressed concern at the fact that I was here to do a piece on this section of beach because I got to tell you, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people that I can see easily over a stretch looking back that way. And I'll turn here in a second. There, we've got to be looking at easily several miles of beach. <laughs> Look at that. I, I mean, that's it that way. Uh, if you uh, if you look behind us, there's really nobody out that way. This place is phenomenal. It's pretty empty. Uh, you know, I've, I've learned there are some detractions. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, when we have a little bit more of a factoid segment. But, uh, or maybe we already have, depending on how I assemble this. True. <laughs> True. Production, you never know. But, uh, yeah, this place is worth a visit, man. It's unbelievable here. It really is. And I'm so happy, you know, that we made that decision. Because that's what life comes down to, isn't it? Making decisions for yourself. Do it. Listening to your gut. Just doing it. Do it. Making it happen. That's what we did today. And we found a 
beautiful strip of wild sand. The only way to hunt those wild beaches and find them is get out there and do it. Beach yeah. out. So we just decided to stop. Another little pit stop along the way back on our journey to southward lands. Uh, you know, we're kind of a little pressed for time, but we just wanted to investigate a little bit more. Just met a couple of great people from... New Hampshire. Unbelievable. And uh, we're on a little boardwalk, oh, about 20 feet up over the surf. There's these beautiful dunes. Lots uh, of sea grapes. I love the sea oh grapes everywhere. Oh my god, everywhere. sea grapes are just so great. And I'll try to get a, uh, I'll try to get a, a better shot of this. Uh, but there's still nobody on the beach. And then we've gone down. How many miles do you think we came down? Oh, uh, we've come down probably about eight miles uh, oh, wow. south at this point from where we were at Middle Creek. Cove, and Middle Cove. Middle Cove. Middle Cove, right, excuse me. It's, I mean, look at that down there. Amazing. Show the, show the crowd. And so when I wrote the accompanying piece that goes along with this video hoo-ha at 35,000 feet somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean flying back north in a cold and gray night in a tube full of people crying babies and sweating adults. I think if I could, if I could only get them to understand what I'm really getting at here that to get to the good stuff, you know, to get to those hidden beaches, to get to those places in our relationships, the life around us, any, anywhere, I mean, it's life, man, right? You need to go those extra few miles. You have to be willing to go those extra few miles, you have to decide to have confidence in yourself to do that. You have to decide to keep your eyes wide and your smile even wider. These are the things that all pay dividends. Because ultimately, we are we all search the same thing we're all searching for that perfect piece of sand the perfect piece right and it's all out there it's out there just go that extra mile